Uh, today I want to talk um, a little bit on a topic on a topic I called knowledge with a difference and I want you to go with me to Ezekiel chapter 37 and we're going to read a famous passage from verse 1. Ezekiel 37 if you don't know where it's at it's somewhere in the Old Testament. Verse 1 let's read from the top. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold there were many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say unto them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will put a snooze on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7 says this, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Today I want to talk to you about knowledge with a difference. God comes to Ezekiel and he takes him in the spirit and brings him into the valley of dry bones and begins to have a conversation with the prophet of God. Begins to have a conversation with Ezekiel and he asks Ezekiel, what do you see? Can these bones live again? And they begin to conversate together and discuss. And I want to, for us to take few lessons from this passage, from this story. To take few principles to apply it into our life. Today this message is to those that maybe in your situation, your situation is, has gone beyond the point of return. Maybe your dream has, you know there is dry but there is very dry seasons that you're going through that maybe your marriage you know it was bad but now you're looking at it and you say you know I don't think there's ever any comeback from it maybe you're looking you know you had a plan in your life you know to get married by 25 by 30 having a few kids having successful marriage but now you're 35 and you think your Lord Jesus I'm very very dry my time has gone by or maybe you know that business that you've been working on you know it's just been stagnant and whatever effort you apply whatever things that you're you, whatever energy you put into the investment money is just not going going forward today this message is for you God talks to Ezekiel and says Ezekiel can these bones live He's asking Ezekiel, Ezekiel what do you think? Ezekiel what do you know? Can this situation live? Today God is asking you, He's asking me regarding your situation, regarding your family, regarding your career, your business, regarding the thing that you're going through. He's asking you what do you think? Can it work? Can you progress? Can it move forward? Can it be revived? Can you succeed? See knowing knowledge is power and the kind of knowledge that you have will determine the quality of your life. The kind of knowledge that uh, that you obtain in your life will depend the kind of quality you have. God is coming to Ezekiel and he's asking Ezekiel what do you see? He says I see a dry bones. He stayed in him a fact. The fact is the situation is very bad. The fact is the situation is beyond the point of return. The fact is the the business is not going forward. The fact is the kids are strained on drugs, rebellious and the kids are you know gone haywire kids left home the fact is husband 
is not treating me right wife is not treating me right the fact is things are not moving forward but God wasn't asking Ezekiel for facts he was asking him what does he know what truth did he embrace what did he what did he accept as truth for himself what kind of knowledge does he have concerning the situation he's in see your knowledge produces the pattern of thinking that you have how you can know what kind of knowledge you have is the kind of thoughts that you think when you think of that situation that's the kind of knowledge that you have whether it's positive whether it's negative examine yourself and you have to understand and know what you carry on inside of you to know how to proceed forward the kind of knowledge the kind of truth that you have because if knowledge determines your patterns of thinking the truth that's that's ingra engraved in your subconscious in your inner spirit if it determines the kind of thoughts you think because thoughts determine your actions your actions determine your behavior behavior determines your habits and habits form your destiny so it's very important to understand and, un and and comprehend the kind of knowledge and truth that you embraced about your particular situation or your life see knowledge is acquired by our five senses by seeing hearing touch and smell the biggest source of of our of uh, of our information that that collect that our knowledge collects is from seeing and hearing that's why you have to be extremely careful of what information do you let in what do you read what you watch what you hear what you allow what you feed yourself with because that information will be a base for the knowledge that you will carry the truth that you will embrace I'll, just to give you an example there were, um, there were two men in England and both of them in the same hospital in the city, in, in the same city they were diagno diagnosed with a disease uh, that rendered them unable to walk they both of them received same kind of information and both uh, but one decided to base his knowledge his truth on the fact on the information that he received from the doctor and remained in a wheelchair the other one decided and he said you know what yes it might be the fact that this sickness is in my body and I can't walk but I'm choosing to embrace different information and base my knowledge my truth on different fact this man with many tries slowly begin to walk after some time he began to run this name this man his name is Roger Bannister he was the first human being to break a mile to run under four minutes three minutes and 59 seconds first human in history in 1954 who broke a record of a mile nobody could run a mile before under four minutes and he ran a mile under under four minutes three minutes and 59 seconds what makes the difference between the two it's the knowledge that they possessed and as a matter of fact the other guy was misdiagnosed his condition wasn't severe and he remained in a wheelchair and this man Roger was diagnosed correctly but he refused that knowledge he refused that information and accepted different truth about himself the knowledge that you carry will determine the quality of your life I wonder today how many people were meant to run with a company of millions of dollars yet they're working on a wheelchair of ten uh, ten dollars an hour I wonder how many how many families the how many marriages are suffering on a wheelchair when they were meant to run and break limits for God and save others and help others I wonder how many business people are stuck in their uh, in, in in their uh, in their limitation on their wheelchair of their mind 
well they were meant to break sales records and 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 run multi-million and billion dollars corporations i wonder how many people are stuck in a wheelchair of their predicament of their family nobody, grad, nobody graduated from college and live a life without a degree when they are meant to get a degree in engineering and practicing law or any other things and run with it it all comes down to the kind of knowledge the kind of truth they decided to embrace see God is not asking you what you know that he knows he's asking you to tell him what you know see we all know here him and Ezekiel was just like most Christians today say God God's asking you what do you think can these bones live and he gives this typical Christian answer God if it's your will it's your bill God whatever you will let it be done well if I'm sick in your body in my body if you want to heal me God let it be so if I'm struggling with poverty God if you want me to prosper then let it rain God is not asking Ezekiel Ezekiel tell me what I know or what I think about these bones he's asking Ezekiel Ezekiel what do you think about these bones he says they're very dry God says no I know but what do you think can they live what makes the difference in your and my life in our Christian life is not what we know what God knows about us the kind of destiny he has for us the kind of goal and a future he has for us the kind of thoughts that he has for us it's it doesn't make no difference what God thinks about your destiny in your call if that's not what you think about it if you if that's not what you can embrace and make the truth for yourself that knowledge would be your kind of knowledge so many Christians quote the scripture turn around and stomp to the ground three times and shout and say amen yet go back home still defeated still broke seat busted and disgusted still sick in their body while God thinks one thing about them but they think differently about themselves I wonder how your life would change if you embrace what God knows about your situation I wonder how my life would change if I truly embrace the knowledge of God that he has for my dry bones God is asking you what you think about it it's not what God knows that matters it's what you know you have to understand God will never work in your life above the level of your thinking if your thinking and your dream and your goal is one day that you make twenty dollars an hour God will not go above that he'll get you to that place if you think that uh, God can get you to the place where you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year God will get you there if you truly believe it's your capacity to embrace God's thoughts to embrace God's ways to embrace God's knowledge about you that will determine the level of life that you're gonna reach in your life in your marriage in your business in your spirituality in your ministry in your home group in every area of your life it does not come automatically it comes as, as a result of you embracing God's promise and make it your own God's truth about your situation not the facts that speaking see um our situation they speak your situation they speak your setbacks they speak bad relationship and marriage they speak and over time it's easy to accept what they say constant setback and failure constant limitation your background your upbringing it speaks to you it tells you but it's up to you to embrace what God says or what the world say or what your past say you choose the source of information which will be the base for your knowledge and that knowledge will determine well your life 
will end up. Uh, there's another story of a man as I was searching for this story. I guess there's actually many of them. It's, it's so crazy. Uh, there was this man uh, for por uh, Portuguese, uh, Rufio Borrego. At the age of 13, he was diagnosed with some muscle disease that again rendered him unable to walk. At the age of 13, he was put on a wheelchair. At 2010, 43 years later, he, he gets a new doctor. The other doctor whether died or stopped treating him or whatever the reason was. He gets a new neurologist and neurologist decides to send him for scans and tests just to see if there is anything that he can do to improve his life. Guess you find out that this man 43 years ago was misdiagnosed and that this man that's already past his 50s has a minor problem with his muscles that they can be treated with therapy and small guidance and at the age almost at 60 this man begins to learn how to walk again and begins to walk in his life because he embraced the wrong information and made it his truth and knowledge for 43 years of his life this man sat on a wheelchair and was limited today i wonder what are the things i'm embracing what are the things you are embracing because you grew up in it because that's what you were told that you will never amount to anything you'll never do you'll never succeed in it what do you think you're the only smart one in our family that you're going to start a business going to start making making millions stop this nonsense go get a degree go get a job and go do this or that or whatever other nonsense that people spoke to you and you chose the life of a wheelchair when you are meant to run with God without limits when you were meant to shatter every obstacle and to get around in life as you wish as God has planned for you so many people today are rolling in the wheelchairs in their family so many people today rolling in the wheelchairs in their career in their marriage so many people chose a life of limitation because they embraced wrong type of knowledge they embraced wrong type of information today God is calling you to get up from your wheelchair today God is calling you to put an end to that demonic lie and today God is asking you what do you say about your situation what do you see in a valley of dry bones do you see life do you see progress do you see prosperity do you see successful marriage do you see restored family do you see your kids coming back home do you see your kids serving God do you see your home group growing do you see your church exploding God is asking you what do you see in a valley of dry bones because that will determine whether these bones will live again or they will remain as dry bones or they will remain as a memorial what you could have been but never done what you could have achieved but you never pursued God is asking you to embrace his thinking today he's asking you to embrace his knowledge his truth he is asking you to embrace his promises today change what you see and how you see your situation in your life point number two speak what you know not what you feel speak what you know not what you feel Ezekiel says God the bones are very very dry beyond the point of return God says son of man prophesy he says speak to them command them to come back to life command those bones to come together command snooze and muscle tissue to, to cover it command skin to cover it and command the breath to come from four corners of the uh, of the wind and command it to come to life what you speak matters what you say with your words matters so cut out the negativity cut out victim kind of mindset and talking 
Oh, they did this to me. Oh, they mistreated me. Cut out all kinds of uh, complaining and whining. Because that's not the language of God. That's not the language of the Holy Spirit. Embrace what God says about situ your situation. And speak God's word despite the fact that your situation is very, very dry. Begin to speak into your kids. Begin to speak into your marriage. Begin to speak what you want to see, not what you see now. Begin to speak and strong army that will rise up and will conquer. Begin to speak strength. Begin to speak victory into your situation. Your words have power. You know, um, there's this misconception that when we talk about creation, people say God created this world from nothing. But I beg to differ. God did not create this world from nothing. See, God says, God, he says about himself, he is light. If you know anything about light, light is an energy. Have you, uh, when you were kids or maybe you, when you were adults too, you take a magnifying glass and you try to uh, focus the sun, the light in a, in a uh, lens and try to start a fire. How many of you did that? The rest of you missed out on childhood. Okay light is an energy is a very strong energy that's why you see solar panels you know they collect the light and and and, and break it into the energy that's why you see if you look at a laser now they have laser weapons uh that um you know shoot down planes and destroy things uh, i mean uh, laser is a, is, a, is a form of light we see um x-ray machines uh we see uh what are those things called um uh radiations and gamma rays and all these things that they fight and kill cancer um, and light is an energy and God is light second element in creation that we see so light so light is an energy second uh, element that we see in creation Bible says that God said let there be light he said let there be this and that God spoke sound is a form of energy so combined those of you that if you don't believe me put our headphones on and play it really really loud see what happens to your ears I'm just joking don't do that but you get the point sound is an energy there's even a uh i, I don't remember some of long time ago i read that in some countries the way they test skyscrapers for their stability is they bring this huge huge speaker and they play it really loud that that sends those uh sound waves and the building pretty much they replicate like 5.0 or 6.0 earthquake to see if the building withstands that's the kind of power that sound has so coming back to creation God created the world with light and with sound with power of his words where I'm going with this Bible says that you are the light of the world you carry the light that energy that creative energy combined with your words when you speak with the sound of your words you begin to create the very things that you speak in your life you begin to do the things that God did when he created his world when he created this world God has given you an ability to create don't speak negative don't speak bad words over your children over your spouse over your business never say oh man I'm just stupid oh I, I knew it never work out get rid of such a words from your vocabulary speak the words of God speak life your words have power what you speak will come to pass and the point number three he says to Ezekiel I mean Ezekiel says in verse 7 so I prophesied as I was commanded. Prophesy because God commands you to do so. God tells you to speak His promise, His word. It's not, all, it's not just an option. It's God telling you, speak my word into your life and watch what I will do. Speak my promise into your life and watch what I will do. He says, Ezekiel, prophesy. 
because Ezekiel if you do not prophesy the bones will never live again if you don't speak into your life if you don't speak into that situation into your marriage into your business it will never take off it will never prosper it will never move forward if you don't speak the bones will remain very dry God commands you prophesy into your life in Jesus name don't speak to God about your problems speak to your problems about your God don't complain don't whine sometimes our prayers there is time for intercession there is time for prayer there is time for for uh, for uh, for request when we bring before God but many times our prayers they turn into whining they turn into disbelief many times the way we pray to God is as though we don't believe that he is almighty it's as though we don't believe he's all powerful it's as though we don't believe that he holds the universe in his hand as though we don't believe that he is in charge of our situation he's just waiting for you to release your word so he can begin to work He's just waiting for you so you can begin to prophesy. Prophecy is simply meaning talking about the future. So you can begin to talk about your future as all it is now. That you begin to declare the things into the atmosphere, into your situation, your marriage, your business, your finances. That you begin to unleash God's power into your life. God is waiting on you to change your life. He's not waiting he's not waiting for a perfect timing he's not waiting on himself you're not waiting on God God is waiting on you to embrace his principles to embrace what he's calling you to do today begin to speak into your life begin to speak into your family begin to declare in numbers 14 28 says as surely as I live declares the Lord I will do the very thing I heard you say he says, I will do the very thing that I heard you say. What is God constantly hearing you say? What is God constantly hearing you say about the valley of dry bones in your life? Is he hearing complaints? Is he hearing how unfortunate I am? Just how I was born in a wrong family? How was I was born on the wrong side of the tracks? How people mistreated me? How people uh, took advantage of me? Or is God here in faith? Or, God's, or is God here and you know, if God got me to this place, if God kept me alive when many people died, if God got me this far, I believe He can take me further. I believe He's going to take me to the next place. One person faces a challenge in his life and he says, God brought me to bury me in this place. The other per a person say, faces the same situation and he says, God brought me here to elevate me, to take me to the new place. That people that solve problems, people that face challenges and overcome, become the successful ones, become the prosperous ones, becomes the one that enjoy the fruit of the life, of their words and of their thinking and of the knowledge that they carry on inside of them. Today God is saying, what do you know about your situation? What do you declare? What do you speak about the very thing you find yourself stuck in? It's easy to say negative words. It's easy to declare um, how you're unfortunate. But when you take a high road, when you begin to partner with God, and begin to create in your life when you allow the Holy Spirit to be unleashed through the power of your thinking and through the power of your words the Holy Spirit has freedom to create the very life you desire I challenge you today embrace the mind of God the knowledge of Christ embrace what he has for you the promises of God and begin to speak into your life begin to speak it in your life begin to prophesy son of man can these bones live yes Lord they will live in Jesus name if you receive something put your hands together for Jesus Christ